I'm here today at the Tulsa Rose Garden, and like many other public gardens across the country, this garden has suffered serious losses due to rose rosette disease. Now, we've learned a lot from this garden and similar ones, as well as in research trials about management of rose rosette. And so I wanna talk a little bit today about tips for trying to keep your landscapes healthy and free of rose rosette. This rose garden's been here since the 1930s, and about 20 years ago, there were more than 5,000 roses on this property. And unfortunately, when Rose Rosette arrives, it was an epidemic, and they're down to a, just a few hundred roses at this site. So some of the things that we've learned looking back is that at the, when it first showed up, the horticulturalists did not recognize that Rose Rosette was the problem. They saw the unusual shoots and distortion, but they just clipped it off and kept working. And what we've learned now is that pruning is just not a very effective management strategy. And so it would have been better. They probably could have slowed down Rose Rosette at this site if they had dug up and removed those symptomatic plants. There's often a lag period, even though you may not see symptoms on your plants. A lot of times the microscopic mites are present and the virus may be all throughout the plant, just not currently ex expressing symptoms. So the main recommendation is to discard plants if you observe they have rose rosette. One of the other issues was that those gardeners continued to work in the landscape and as they moved around, they could have been carrying those microscopic mites on their tools or their clothing. And so as they moved from diseased areas into healthy areas, they could have carried those mites. So now we encourage landscapers that have more than one planting of roses to always start with healthy plantings and work with the suspicious or plantings where you've had rose rosette as late in the day as possible. And so if any of those mites carrying the virus are present, uh, we don't move them into healthy areas. So at the end of the day, launder your clothing and come back fresh the next day. For tools and equipment, there's many different sanitizers that can be used to clean those tools and remove those mites. Some other things that this garden is doing, just like others, is that they are diversifying their planting. So back when they had 5,000 roses here, they basically had a monoculture. And so when the disease showed up, it just raced through the planting. And so now we see lots of other types of plant material being incorporated with the roses. So this increase in diversity has helped quite a bit. In research trials, Dr. Mark Windham at the University of Tennessee has done some work with green barriers such as ornamental grasses. And if we have these larger barrier plants planted in between roses, the mites, if they were to move from this rose and try to launch on the wind to other areas, those green barriers intercept and are helping prevent the rapid spread of rose rosette. So anytime you can include different sized plant material and increase your diversity, that's great in breaking up the disease cycle. We also believe that one of the ways that rose rosette was spread in this garden was the use of leaf blowers. Often landscapers after pruning roses will use leaf blowers and they'll pile those clippings and then scoop them up all at one time. Uh, it's likely that using leaf blowers around roses could launch some of those mites into the air so they move into other areas. Also using leaf blowers to clean up leaves or long clippings should not be used any time around roses. Now one other aspect of management is of course the use of miticides and we talk a little bit about that in one of the other videos in this series but at this particular rose garden one great practice has been what we call dormant pruning followed by the application of an oil. So in the winter months, about a month before the roses break dormancy, we remove most of those leftover leaves and blooms from the previous season, cut back the plant, and then apply an oil at the dormant rate. It's a high enough percentage of oil that it's smothering any overwintering arthropods, and it also helps reduce other diseases like black spot or anthracnose that also affect roses. 
Throughout the season, once the plants break dormancy, miticides can be applied to help prevent or suppress mite populations. And consult with your county extension office about what products are labeled for use in your area. Some other things that are being done is looking at different cultivars, not just planting one cultivar using different types. They have different disease and insect resistance. And so it's likely that there are some cultivars out there that are tolerant or resistant to rose rosette. Uh, we're, we, there's another video in this segment that talks more about that. And so hopefully we'll have some resistant or tolerant cultivars to report in the future. Another aspect of management is keeping your plants healthy. And so anytime your plants are healthier, they're better able to resist pest and disease issues. And so maintaining fertility, irrigating during periods of drought, mulching to help conserve soil moisture and prevent erosion is really useful. If you're looking for other information about uh, Rose Rosette, please review other parts of this video series or visit the roserosette.org website or the Combating Rose Rosette Facebook page.